You ain't got no Yeezy. Stupid. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Adam Pecora here. And welcome to yet another rendition of Requiem for a Tuesday. How you feeling? That's good. <laughs> I don't know. Rhetorical questions don't really work, I guess. Pressing. Pressing forward. <laughs> um, it's going to be a wild one. Um, if you listen to the last episode, you know I went through a uh, pretty hot take on The Hobbit. And uh, I, I said I'd follow up. You know what I mean? I got to go... Uh, I got to go with uh, The Rings next. And we got to compare, contrast, and do all that. And I will. And uh, it's going to be a heater. That's for sure. I got a lot, I got a lot cooking. I got a lot stewing. We're going to grab a ladle and scoop all that out, slurp it down, <laughs> and really just get to the bottom of all that. Um, but first, I'll do my little, my little usual plug run. Uh, please rate, review, subscribe to this show. Would, would be nice. You know what I mean? Just, uh, just throwing that out there. Goes a long way. Um, we got, we got the web store going. That's been fun. Been been giving me a nice excuse to uh, pedal over to the post office, you know, get a little exercise in. That's right, hand delivered, ladies and gentlemen. Um. So yeah, rfat.bigcartel.com for that. Um, and we're gonna be adding some microwave minutes merch. There, go check that show out as well. Uh, both of those you can get in the description. So the link's all there. And uh, there will be one more third link. Yes, that's right. The three links to rule them all. Uh, That one will just link you to all of my other shit if you're interested at all. Great, great, great. Okay. So, before we dive in (laughs) on my uh, Peter Jackson deep dive... Let's just say, real quick, today is November 23rd, as I'm recording this, right? So let's just take the time, because here's the thing. If this is a sequel episode, I'm going to make it a sequel episode on all fronts. Okay, we're going to do this right. Can't go small time here, okay? We got the big potatoes. (laughs) I don't like those little potatoes, you know? (laughs) Um... So I talked a little bit about my uh, Vote Kanye merchandise last episode as well. Yesterday, fittingly, almost like I planned it or something. Did I? Didn't I? I didn't. Don't worry about it. Uh, But yesterday was the anniversary of my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't, you gotta. Probably the best thing ever made, you know? But let's... People don't like to hear that, you know, because like, what about the 60s? And it's like, I don't know, man. Sounds like you should get over it. Anyway, that's right. Talking to you, Ringo. (laughs) I, that guy, come on. Who takes Ringo seriously? You know what I mean? I think my dad asked me once, like, you want to go see Ringo Starr? And I'm like, are you out of your mind? That sounds so unappealing to me. But, you know. Hey, we're, we, we've all got our own flavors, I guess. So I guess uh, I apologize to all the Ringo stands out there whom I may have just offended. But you know what I mean? Somebody had to say it, right? <laughs> Somebody had to. Anyway, yeah, I mean, it's just got to be. It's just got to be. I've got some other ones up there. The thing is, it's just like, oh, man, that Jay-Z verse on Monster. It's just like, I feel like that's the easiest counter argument you can make to be like, eh, pretty much knocks it off its pedestal. I, I, you know, I can't defend it. It's there. He he did better on Soul Paul, I guess. But, man, I really, 
So I hadn't listened to like old Jay Z at the time. So all I knew him off of was like Empire State of Mind. And then like fucking, you know, the monster verse. <laughs> and whatever, you know. I mean, watch the throne was sick, like right after. But you know what I mean. So I was just like, man, this dude's corny. Like I didn't get it at the time. It it really steered me away. Like if that's your first Jay Z impression, which is unfortunate for me, you know what I mean? I missed out on a couple years of enjoyment that I could have had. But also, like, I don't know how that made the album, is all I'm going to say. Anyway, great album. I'm not going to go into it. You all know. You know what it's about. And if you can find out. You know what I mean? I'm here to talk shit. <laughs> and all I can't just be praising stuff. That's not fun for anybody. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. We don't need to we don't need to be like jumping on that train. But you know, praise is due to the most high. You know what I'm saying? Also, like, let's just be realistic. Is like Devil in a New Dress run away back to back, like the peak of music? Like how do you how do you top that? You know what I'm saying? You can't. You can't. There's some stretches that are just, like, unattainable. You know what I mean? I would say I would put the first four tracks of I Love You, Honey Bear up there, but that's just, like, fanboy stuff, I think. I don't think that that could be as broad of a statement. But you just listen to those four songs, it's like this album is probably one of the best ever, and it's like, eh, you know, it's still really good, but it doesn't quite make it all the way. And you know what makes it all the way? MBDTF. That's right. So salute to the God. You know what I mean? What what can you say? There's only one. Enough said. <laughs> See, I feel weird just doing that. It's like what? Somebody I really gotta jerk this jerk this off. I, I don't know. For for whatever reason, like you put you talk to me about a director, I'll suck his dick in front of you. <laughs> I was going to try to keep that going, but it's like, you know what I mean? It's just like, I, I'll i fanboy it out. We can we can talk shop. But it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have a lot to say about Peter Jackson, that's for sure, and I'm going to be very comfortable. <laughs> I'm going to be, some would say too comfortable, you know? But that's just how we roll here. Also, I just want to note, I got this nice little... uh. It's like boom arm to replace my shitty one that I've had this whole time that was always clanging and banging around. <laughs> so if you notice a lot less like the sound of just metal, hollow, hollow metal echoing constantly, it's because it's gone. I threw it in the garbage. It was breaking and now I have a nice boom. Shout out Samson. This thing's sick and it feels like it's made of real things. Does not feel frail or easy to break. Whereas the other one literally folded in half. And not at the part, like, yes, at the part where it's supposed to, but I mean at, like, the the metal parts where it's not supposed to. I could just bend it in half. So <laughs> we got some structure here. You know, I'm, I'm really, uh, really living the dream, balling it out. So let's just keep filling those orders, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a small business owner. Hooray. But, uh, okay. I can't delay it. I was going to try to build it up and, like, you know, really push it. Push it to the brink. Make it a, make it a mid-episode treat. But I think we just got to arrive at the point here. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to start this time correctly because if it's, if you didn't listen last time or whatever, either way, by clarifying that I have not and absolutely, I promise will not read any of these books. (laughs) So none of this is based on any insight with any prior knowledge. So take that with what you will, Uh, but it's not going to stop me from continuing on. So (laughs) 
just let that be a nice little warning. Um, I had a pretty hot take. And you know what? Frankly, I it I thought that it was going to really be embarrassing in the long run. And, I mean, that still technically may be the case as far as everyone else is concerned. But as far as I am concerned... I think it I think I was absolutely on point. I almost want to listen back and just agree with myself retroactively. Like, damn, way to nail almost all of it. Now, I'll admit that there were some faults and you know, some big mistakes. You know, there's gonna be a whole lot to discuss here. Comparing Hobbit versus Lord of the Rings. And it's gonna. It's I. I. I feel like I'm gonna need to protect myself. <laughs> it just doesn't seem right. I remember. We're going all the way back now. I remember when this was like popping off pretty vaguely. Only because the the first one came out in like what 2001, right? Fellowship. And. You know, I was six, so it's like, how much do I even remember? You know what I mean? It's like, I kind of remember the Patriots Super Bowl. That's why I'm still interested and keep talking about them. It worked out well, you know? Shout out to the birthday that I had. (laughs) Uh, It really made an impression, you know? And... You know, the Lord of the Rings win every year at the Oscars. That just seemed to be reality. It's like, okay, I guess every year there's a Lord of the Rings movie that wins. You know what I mean? I'm small. I don't get it. And, you know, you hear your family members talking about it at gatherings and such. Remember those? (sighs) Don't miss them. (laughs) Ha ha! We're not interested. Anyway. And it's like, wow, this is like such a big deal. Everybody really loves this. Blah, 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 blah. Don't understand it. Didn't see him. Too young. Okay? Missed the boat. I'm not going to lie. Okay? I maybe didn't explain that in depth enough before because we weren't talking about the Lord of the Rings. You know, we were just going Hobbit. But now, now that the full cycle has been complete... I must say that my earlier attempts to watch Fellowship were bullshit, and I'm dumb for my old thoughts on it. Okay? I'm going to come fully clean with that. Um, I will say that it still is kind of a slow intro. I wasn't a big fan, but I was definitely way more into it than I was the first time it's definitely not like pain i remember it being like painfully boring i just like wasn't really watching you know what i mean uh but they definitely linger a fuck ton in the shire okay so i don't understand why that's such a bad thing in the hobbit movie you know what i mean so Basically, all that I learned is that before I go movie by movie, I was getting ahead of myself there. I'm going to backtrack one more time, but then we're going to press on. Basically, they did the same thing just as well. This is what I don't understand. This is my overall opinion. I'm just going to get that out of the way first. I liked the Hobbit trilogy a lot, and I liked the Lord of the Rings trilogy uh, mostly a lot. So that's going to kind of give away where this is going to head. But (laughs) I don't understand how one is like the best thing ever done in a lot of things that I read. And then the other one is like mediocre and whatever in a lot of things that I read when they're like 100% on par with each other, like in every way. So that doesn't make any sense to me. And we're going to deep dive on that as I go on. But that's like the lead in that you're going to want to need to know. Because this is not as I 
have been alluding to, this is not a big jerk off thing. I definitely undervalued the entire franchise is what I've learned. But especially my ignorance to the early ones. Like, you know what I mean? Definitely could have watched those earlier and probably would have been into it. But either way, we got here and we made it. But I definitely have a lot of gripes. (laughs) So that's kind of what this is really going to be unpacking. Because also, I just feel like the entire Hobbit trilogy was just, is so disrespected now, is my feeling. And I'm super doubling down on repping that shit as superior. And it's rough. You know, I'm not, like, proud of it, but I'm also not going to back down. <laughs> so it's, 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 uh, it's confusing. But uh, I, do, I do it for entertainment. What can I say? You know what I mean? These are the sacrifices that I make exercising my freedom of speech or whatever. So anyway, back to fellowship, right? They're lagging for fucking ever in the Shire, and it's boring. Now, okay, here's the thing. I get it. If you haven't seen, obviously, at the time, you wouldn't have seen the Hobbit movie. So, like, no precursor. They, they do a good job of wrapping it all in, but also The Hobbit did a good job of looping itself back in. Obviously, they had the movies to ref- reference off of, but it loops in nice whether you have or haven't seen. Obviously, if you haven't, it works out fine because it came out first, but if you have, it also ties in almost exactly the same. I wish that they would have updated The Lord of the Rings so when they show Bilbo finding the ring in the flashback scene it would just be the Hobbit scene so then it's like okay now we're really cooking anyway so I mean if it's like the first time seeing it I can understand spending more time there to like you know show people what it's like and all that but also like the party and stuff I'm not feeling it I just wasn't interested. It was very, like, Disney-esque and, like, very PG. And I don't know. It just wasn't as cool as the dwarves coming in and then, like, making a mess but then doing all the dishes and whatever. I thought that that was more fun. Okay? That's just me. Um, And also just biggest gripe overall of all of them, like the entire series combined, I just don't understand or they didn't convey it in a way that was easy for me to get, I guess. I might just be dumb, but I don't understand how the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy is about how this ring is so powerful and you can't give it up, but like Bilbo's just like here and it's like no problem. Uh, I probably missed something. I hope I missed something, but otherwise that's just like, that doesn't really make any sense to me. You know, is it just that he's old, but shouldn't he technically be like Gollum if it's that possessive or is Gollum just that weak, which that's going to be a whole rabbit hole we're going to get to anyway. It, it, it has a slow start is my point. The first movie starts off slow. They don't form the fellowship for like an hour and a half. And, you know, whatever. That's fine. The other hobbits, the two little guys, Pip and whatever, don't care about them. You know what I mean? They're kind of funny, I guess. But it's like they make it clear that they don't matter. So it's like, do we really even need them? And I get that we do. It's part of the book. Whatever. Uh, The one thing I will say is I love how, like, when little problems come up, they do just get rid of them very quickly. Like, whenever somebody, like, tries to confront Gandalf, and he's just like, nah, bro, and he just, like, slams his staff and, like, solves the problem, and it's just like, okay, we can just move forward now. You know what I mean? Like, they got a good role in their D&D game, so it's just like, okay, yeah, you you won. Let's just go. I, I do respect that, because... I was anticipating them to milk every single interaction they had for dramatic tension, and I love that they didn't. That it is like, no, this is a journey. Like, we're going to keep moving. Uh, Which which was great about all six movies. It's like they kind of, they knew when to pick their spots, for the most part. 
for the most part. Um, but yeah, like or like when when the dude got greedy and like was gonna like kill Frodo for it or whatever his plan was to try to steal it. They're just like, okay, we'll just get rid of it. You know what I mean? And then boom, we'll move on. And then they're like, oh, we'll just break up the fellowship. Get out of here. Which that part I thought was kind of cheap. You know what I mean? Because there's like, nope, you guys will go alone. And it's like, oh, well, wasn't the whole point of this that like you guys all go do this? But whatever. And the weird thing about the split is like the story's supposed to be about Frodo, but the only interesting stuff is happening to everybody else. So it's like, that's where I'm kind of torn with it. Because the Frodo story sucks. And Frodo sucks. That that was the most spot-on prediction that I had the whole time. Bilbo is absolutely the shit, and Frodo is the worst. He can't do anything. He can't do anything. Like, the fact that Sam is, like, always protecting him and shit, he's just, like, another hobbit who's a gardener. You know what I mean? It's not like he's, like, a massive, like, protective warrior. He's just, like, there with him. (laughs) You know what I mean? I don't think even he signed up for that. He's like, I'm not, like, your security guard, man. Because also, like, you knew he was going to get all the credit at the end because it's, like, his journey or whatever. But, like, he, like, literally had to be carried half the time. You know what I mean? It's just, like... I don't know if I'm really, like, even rooting for this guy. It's like, how about you just, like, have a little dignity, bro? You know? Because the thing is, like, I I guess I don't get how it corrupted him so much. But again, Bilbo had it all that time and, like, was chill. I guess just because he's not weak. Is that... Did I just talk myself through that potentially like it's literally just oh Frodo's soft as hell so that's why this is like this he's just like the next golem okay that's fine if that's the case then I'll take it if the explanation is he's soft as hell then that's that's a good explanation well we'll press on um I should note that I thought that the whole like the way the look of the 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 movie was when Bilbo went invisible in The Hobbit was annoying and stupid. I do now get how it's just like, it it's like that because it has to be similar to what Frodo saw when he did it. So I guess that that's fair. Um, but it honestly, it looked way better in the, in the Lord of the Rings. Like, obviously it was for different purposes though. Like it was supposed to be like just terrifying. I guess, because Frodo, again, couldn't fucking handle it, but uh, whatever. (laughs) But I get that, that, like, it meant Sauron can see him and shit. That was just a little jab for fun. (laughs) Taking shots. Um, So, let me cut away the other story, though, especially in the first two movies, was so sick. Uh, Vigo Mortensen, come on. You know, although, like, I don't give a fuck about, like, he wanted to, he was banging Liv Tyler, and then he had to stop because of their, like, different races. Like, I don't care about that drama. That's not interesting to me. The politics and stuff, I don't care. That's why I have, like, no interest in any of the extended cuts, because it's just, like, more built universe. Whereas, like, Trying to watch a movie, you know, clear like I get it. They need there was no like way to prestige televise do this at the time. So it like had to be in a movie and they basically just did it like a show. But like I don't want to watch Game of Thrones. You know what I mean? I like these movies. Cause this this was the it was still kinda too much of it. You know, like, let's focus the story, please. I get it. It's fantastical. There's a whole lot going on. You don't need to explain every part of it to me, you know? Make it a different trill than set somewhere else, and now it's just about these people. That could be interesting. You know what I mean? But, like, one thing doesn't need to show at all. 
is my view. That's that's it just doesn't work otherwise. Okay? So the broad stuff is just not for me. I'm sorry. So any of the love stuff is dumb and especially the other chick who is like the king's daughter or whatever. She's like wants to bang him and it's like who cares? Yeah, every woman wants to bang Vigo Mortensen. This isn't a story. You know what I mean? That's just like science. <laughs> we don't even need to show this. Obviously, she wants to bang him and not the Hobbit. We really need to put that on screen? You can't figure that out? Like, was not even a remotely interesting subplot. Cut it out. We don't need it. But the dynamic of him with Orlando Bloom and the, the fucking, what's his name? I don't know. The dwarf guy. They're fun. They're dope. You know what I mean? I would play a video game where those three guys were the guild or whatever. You know what I mean? That game reminded me, like, used to play Dragon Age Inquisition because it was the only thing my ex ever wanted to do. And if I didn't do it, uh, I would have to deal with a lot. Good game, though. Ended up actually liking the game. So it all worked out. Just that part of it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, that, it was fun. I'm not I'm not a Skyrim guy. I can't do the mechanics, that clunky shit. You know? And again, normally not a fan of like fantasy olden times things. Like I'd pick Fallout over that anyway. Regardless. Uh Orlando Bloom is just magic. You know, Legolas is like the coolest guy ever. And he's awesome in both trilogies. And I didn't realize that I knew who Orlando Bloom was until I looked at the credits. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Because I've seen this guy, obviously, in any clip of Lord of the Rings, you know, there's some Legolas in there. It's like, wow, that's a that's a beautiful man. Oh, it's been Orlando Bloom the whole time. Now I get why everybody is obsessed with Orlando Bloom. <laughs> It just like all clicked at once. It's like, Jesus, man, I really was living in the dark on that. You know, I also haven't seen any of those Pirates movies because why the fuck would I go see any of those? So, shout out to Orlando Bloom. Much love. But those three are great. And Gandalf's great. I'm down for all of that. Um, When they were down in the whatever thing and like the stairs broke that was amazing like i was so in i was like on the edge of my seat locked in like the best part of all of these for me is the traveling part and it's like when they get to where they're going i do tend to lose interest because that's when it's just like either political dialogue or battle and i don't know i'm just not I'm not one for, like, a big battle and being like, oh, sick, you know? And, like, that happens. That happens. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that I don't love a great, like, action shot. But it's like, do I want to watch a 20-minute battle sequence? Like, not really, especially when most of it's CGI. I know we're going to, I'm not, like, speaking in chronological order of the movies right now, but, you know. The destination hampers it a little bit for me. I like I like the craziness. What's going to happen along the way? You know, you never know. You never know. And look, Gollum's great. Uh, too much. Too much. Didn't realize that he was, like, a main character the entire time. Was an awesome cameo in The Hobbit. It's just like, we don't need that much of it. Also, like, how is he this much of a threat He's, like, constantly beating their ass in fights or, like, just Frodo or whatever or, like, just Sam in, like, different times, whatever. But it's, like, this guy is, like, 500 years old and is just a slimy skeleton. How is he overpowering you? I don't care how much he wants the ring. Just, like, physically, it doesn't even make any sense. I don't care that they're hobbits. He was a hobbit. Right? So, I mean, I just, it's, like, I don't even buy it. And even if I did, it's like, that's just embarrassing. You're getting your ass kicked by Gollum? 
You know, I mean, come on. I I don't fuck with that. Um And I mean, they get captured and then the dude's just like, "Yeah, we'll let you go." Cuz it was the it was the greedy guy's brother or whatever, and yeah, it sets up a whole dynamic thing that I don't care about. Again, it's like part of their like weird political family thing and then he like tries to kill his own son. It's like all of that is just like so dumb to me. It's like we don't need any of this because like I don't know what any of this is. So I'm sure the fans lo- again. This is I I don't I feel I left the disclaimer accurately but like not reading it. So when you're just like introducing a guy who just like captures them just to let them go just so he can be a part of a thing in the next movie that ultimately doesn't matter to any of the main characters' fates anyway, again, you know? So it's like, I, I, I don't know why I, why I need, even need this. You know what I mean? You're giving me extras. But he just fucking lets them go. He just lets them go. So it's like, oh, no, we're captured. And then he's like, but why are you capturing me? That's not the right thing to do. And he's like, you right. Let him go. <laughs> it's like, oh, boy, they were almost foiled yet again. It's like, okay, guys. Could we have done something else? Spice it up a little bit? No? All right. Yeah, he just let him go. Cool. I was worried there for a second. Thought maybe they might not make it to the mountain. Anyway. So that's that's that. And then, I don't know. The orcs don't look very good. They look silly. I don't know how somehow the effects are supposed to be worse in The Hobbit. They're not. Like It's more modern and it looks better most of the time. So that whole thing is just dumb. Again, didn't see it in theaters. So I'm, I'm assuming that that's where a lot of that thing was so we can just call that a wash because also that was 20 years ago and the, the like the fact that they did all of this 20 years ago is unbelievable because if you would have told me it just came out like a hundred percent i'd believe you you know it, there's no not, i'm not trying to knock here it's just it's just like i don't get again i don't get the praise gap but yeah the fact that they did all this 20 years ago it's like an absolutely undeniable amazing feat of production and everything you know, everything about it from a technical aspect is, like, you know, unprecedentedly, like, spectacular. So I have no gripes on that. I just prefer the Hobbit orcs instead. And then also, like, especially, I'm just going to bounce around now because I don't even know the chronological order of what's going on in here. I'm just going to bounce around to my different gripes. (laughs) Because... The orcs are all these, like, ruthless, press forward, we will not stop, we will destroy you. Like, you know what I mean? They're trying to be, like, a force of nature in stopping them or in winning, you know what I mean, in taking over. But then, oh, the reinforcements show up on horses, and they're, like, cowering in fear. It's like, oh, because they have horses now, it's just too much for you. And you're just out like that. That's the end. That's that. We're we're scared now. We're going to lose. I don't know about that. Well, and I mean, just the fact that the same thing just keeps happening. Right? Like they go to that base or whatever and they're like, oh, nobody can get through except for this one weakness. And like, okay, obviously they're going to exploit that weakness. So they get through. Okay, now we have to move to the other place. Then they move to the other place, and then it just happens again. And then they move to another place, and then it just happens again. It's like, okay, well, how about we just make it one place? You know what I mean? One big battle at one spot. We don't need to just keep doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, the battle in Two Towers and the battle in Return of the King are exactly the same thing. Just bigger and... You know what I mean? Like, yes, it's bigger in scale. Okay. It's a sequel. We get it. But you know what I mean? It's like, this is just the same story twice. So, I don't know. At least, like, the... And again, I get it. It's because of how the books were structured or whatever. 
But The Hobbit was one book, and they managed to structure the movies and like, okay, here's the first one. We're going on a journey. We got to go to this place. End of the movie, they're, okay, we're at the place. But now we got to kill this dragon. So the second movie, it's like, all right, we're at the place. We'll go get the dragon. Okay, we got the dragon. Boom, movie's over. And then it's like, oh, but now we got to, like, resolve the remaining issues of, like, the land and whatever. And it's like, all right, well, last movie, we'll resolve everything else. Boom, structure. Nice. I get that it's unfortunate that the book was broken up poorly. I thought they did a good job at, like, beginning and end. So it's not even a thing on that. I just mean, like, how many times am I going to watch the same thing? And why is this Why is this last movie four hours? My biggest gripe is with Return of the King, frankly. Because if you notice, I'm not really complaining about much of the events of Two Towers. Because Two Towers was the shit. It was all the good stuff, pretty much. You know what I mean? There's still some good journey in there. There's good battles. And... You know what I mean? It's just, it keeps moving. There's a lot of stuff. There's none of this, like, political nonsense. Which, uh, from what I hear, is what's terrible about the Star Wars things. But I don't care about Star Wars. Fuck Star Wars. Stand by that. Return of the King. Other than, I believe it was in Return of the King where they had that crazy battle in the open field. Where they got, like, ambushed or whatever. That was amazing. Like, the camera work in there and just like the speed of it all and just it was nuts ton of credit there but the big one at the end again i just watched it in two towers so i wasn't really that engaged most of it was all cgi stuff happening so it's like okay this is a little much for me then the like human version of sauron is just killed in like two seconds pretty effortlessly you know, like, like again, I liked when they resolved my issues that should be minor. Like, oh, here's a roadblock. Let's get it out of the way. But then they're like, when they resolve major things as if it was nothing, that's just crazy to me. She's like, oh, I'll just stab him in the face. Like, we're good. I'll just kill the dragon and kill him. Like, it's over. We're good. It's like, yeah, the eye's still there. I get it. So it's like, whatever. But was that guy was like leading the whole army. It just didn't matter. And then, like, the the fact that the other orcs that capture Frodo again because, you know, he can't get out of his own fucking way and he gets tricked by Gollum and then defeated by a spider, which Sam was able to beat up, who, again, shows no signs of, like, major competence or bravery or anything. He seems... Just as regular of a guy, but can manage these tasks. So, what does that say? And and Gollum is surviving this whole time. Also, he's making the journey. And yeah, they 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 say Frodo's like, oh, he's not sleeping and stuff. I get it, but he's like about to die. I don't know. I just don't buy it. I don't buy it because anyway, what I was trying to say was all of a sudden these orcs just get into a big brawl and want to kill each other, and they're just a giant dysfunctional thing, even though they formed the biggest army ever assembled, according to the characters of the movie. But they're just going to start brawling and completely slip up this entire operation on some petty bullshit. Like, come on. Didn't buy it for a second. It was very obvious that, like, Sam took the ring. I don't know if... if, I don't know. I I guess they didn't really try to play that as if somebody else had it, but the fact that they even had to mention it. And, I mean, again, I talked about how, like, the trio of the Fellowship were the cool guys, and sure, they were. They were kicking ass the whole time, and they were doing cool stuff. Saving everybody, getting everybody together, rallying all the troops. But then the solution is that they're going to summon an army of ghosts to win. It's like, what, what was the point of all of this? I've been watching now, what, 11 hours? 
and you're telling me that the big solution to how they're going to defeat this army, oh, we'll just call up the ghosts. Well, what a shitty payoff. Like, oh, gee, didn't think of that. We should have called all the ghosts to begin with. Could have just overwhelmed them. None of this ever would have happened. Like, get the fuck out of here. I don't care whatever the excuse that they made was and however, you know, it made sense in in the context of the thing. It didn't, and it's dumb. And it they literally looked like the Flying Dutchman from SpongeBob. It looked like thousands of Flying Dutchmans and it was stupid. It was stupid. And if you don't think that that's stupid, I'm sorry, but like come on. That's insane. You're just going to go from because it's one thing that there's like a species of tree people. That's cool and fun. You know? Wow, never would have thought of that. There's these like giant animals, there's like rock people, all this crazy shit, dragons. Wow. But it's like, oh, yeah, well, the ghosts will just help us. I mean, come on. Like, when they got help from giant eagles, I was like, oh, I mean, you know, good timing, I guess. Y'all could have showed up sooner. It's kind of weird. But that's at least like, oh, my God. You know, it's a spectacle. It's something. But it's like, no, we're going to bring the ghost army. How do you lose? Or how do you even win? It doesn't even make any sense. All, all of it. Every part of it. I'm not into it. I think that that's a fucking disaster. I remember audibly being like, what the fuck? And then I remember checking the time and being like, what, there's an hour left? Or maybe longer at that point. It's like, Jesus. And then, you know, they're fucking there. Like, they make it there. Frodo and Sam and, and Gollum, I guess. They make it. And he's like, nah, I'm just going to drop dead 10 feet away. Or what, you know, it wasn't 10 feet away, but whatever. And then Sam's like, okay, like yet again, you suck. And I'll literally carry you there. And that somehow turns into a thing where Frodo ends up just being like, no, I'll do it. And can manage to channel all this energy to, like, sprint up a mountain, even though we were just supposed to believe that he was dramatically going to drop dead on the precipice of doing it. But now, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, if your excuse is just the ring is so powerful, it's like, well, then shouldn't he have not been dying? You know, like, wasn't that Gollum's whole thing? I... You know what I mean? There's just, like, pretty blatant holes in the logic of that. And, you know, if I would love for there to be a really easy explanation, let me know. If I'm just missing everything, you know, we're airing it out here. You know, the take's already weak. I, I mean, I'm the guy who's who says the Hobbit trilogy's better. I, I'm not worried about looking stupid here, so let me know. But anyway, he fucking makes it. And again, cannot fight off this fucking guy. It's just so dumb. And yeah, uh, the fitting way for Gollum to die, that's cool. He go he gets to have his ring. Great. Cool. He was there the whole time. And like, you know, both guys were wrong. Like Sam should have just been chill. And Frodo should have been, like, a little skeptical. He was just like, nah, this guy's good. I can tell. It's like, what are you talking Look at him. You think that guy's, like, not going to try to fuck you over? I mean, just horrible. Like, and the whole, the whole defense for it is just, well, the ring corrupted him. It's like, that doesn't mean that he gets to be the worst. <laughs> You know, why would I be into this then? So, I mean, I'm sorry, Elijah Wood. It's not your fault. You did a great job. All the performances were great across the board. It's hard for me to take Sean Astin seriously because I just see him as the brother on steroids and 50 First Dates, but that's a personal thing. I've just seen that movie an infinite number of times, so what can you do? 
And I mean, I know that Clerks 2 covered it pretty well. But, uh, I mean, they they were gay. Uh, I don't care what anyone tries to say. That was clearly from the first movie trying to be shown, but definitely in Return of the King, that was like the point of the entire resolution of the movie. Like, clear as day. It was like all that was on display. Like, I don't know how you saw anything else if you think you saw anything else. First of all, you look and it's like, oh my God, Th- at this point, this is for real. Like, this is when I know that it was bad, though. Like, before I was just generally saying it, I looked and I was like, there's 40 minutes left in this movie because, like, they'd already destroyed the ring and they'd already gotten off the mountain and, like, they were pretty chill. And it's like, there's 40 minutes left to wrap this up. And then 20 minutes later, I'm like, there's still 20 minutes left. It was the longest 20 minutes ever. And the whole thing... So let me get this straight. So they get back, right? And they say it's been 13 months since the beginning, okay? So you figure the journey back was like they just went back. So that probably took like a month or two, and the rest of it was like a long thing. And then they explicitly say... That, like, four years goes by, right? And he finishes that book. And literally every conversation they have is just, like, hinting at them being in love, like, the entire time at the end. And he writes him that little part in his book, which is just basically, I love you. And But either way, when he leaves, Sam is now supposed to be a married man with multiple children that they show when he gets back to, like, his house. But four years had already passed. Okay? And he is weeping like they just got home. And it's like, bro, you can't just leave again. It's like, no, you guys have been hanging for four years and you started a family. Why are you weeping that this man is leaving? And, like, it it is clearly so much more to them. And, like, the thing in the book and all that, I mean, just come on. They obviously... Their love could not have been accepted amongst their people. That's obviously what this was all about. It, I have no problem with it. You know what I mean? You know, Seinfeld style. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I was just floored that, like, that was, like, the point of the movie. Like, that's how they wrap it up. They're like, oh, by the way, like, this forbidden love could not be. <laughs> it was shocking. I mean, good, you know, real progressive move. It's just like I didn't think that uh, that's what we were getting at with the Lord of the Rings. You know what I mean? And it's like it was just so blatant the entire time. They should have just kissed. So, I mean, it's kind of nice that that's how they did it in the end. And uh, I mean, I get that, like, they technically still didn't say it. But I'm I mean, I don't even see any other way. I'm taking it 100% to the house. That's what went down. So the the fact that that was the movie that, like, swept all the awards, it's just like, how how is that the best one? I think that, I don't know. The last, like, hour and a half was, like, excruciating. If I was in a theater, I would have wanted to leave. When a movie lingers like that and you just can't wait for it to wrap up, which I get that feeling a lot, uh, I can only imagine when it then drags on for another hour plus. It's like, Jesus. Uh, so, yeah, I would rank the movies definitely 2, 1, 3 probably. But, I mean, you could probably swap 1 and 3 and it would be reasonable because I kind of don't really like the beginning and of 1 and I don't really like the ending of 3. Two Towers was sick, though. Uh, and I mean, it may be unfortunate for everyone involved, but I think ultimately the take remains. I, I, I like the Hobbit movies better. I don't know. I don't know how to say it any other way. They're better. Here's the thing. Again, I cannot specify it enough. I did enjoy the original trilogy. I think it's incredibly overrated because, like, of the insane level of praise that it has. 
And I think that the Hobbit trilogy is insanely underrated because of just like the dismissal it got, which is like insane to me. I think if you just if you watch all six, it is a great, amazing work in total. If you watch either trilogy separately, I think that that is also true. But like, I think that like it's definitely better that they were made. I don't think it's one of those like cop out moves. Like I compared it to like them doing like Harry Potter seven in two parts, or like Twilight and five parts, or whatever the fuck extra things they did. I don't think it's like that at all. I think that they put just as much in. I think. You know, I think it shows. I think the production was just as impressive, if not more so. I wouldn't say more so. That's definitely not true. But, you know, with technology, things are easier. That's not on them. And I, I like I like the look of them just as equal. I, I don't get it. I, I, I guess I need somebody to really explain it to me when I'm missing. But if you just watch those movies, I think the Hobbit movies are a better time. And... The broader stuff is part of the story you're actually watching. They don't need to branch it off into nine different things and then make those branch off just to fit in all the stuff. You know, like, it's still central to the story the whole time. Um, But they are all connected incredibly well. Like, so much thought was clearly put into that, and I'm very glad that it was all, like, one big Peter Jackson thing. They did it right. The scores are all great the whole time. All the costumes are great. The world is so immersive and real. Sometimes it just looks like guys running in the woods because, I mean, it literally is. But you know what I mean? It looks like guys in costumes doing it. You're kind of not like, oh, this is Middle Earth. You're like, yeah, that was shot in 2002. You know what I mean? There's just those moments. But that's fine. There's moments in both movies where some things look a little corny. Anytime there's, like, motion, it's not going to look right when somebody's, like, flying a thing. There are times when people, like, in other things will drive a car, and then, like, you'll watch it behind the scenes and realize they actually filmed them really driving the car, but then in the movie, it still looks like a green screen. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. It just happens. But, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm, I got to say... Because I loved the first Hobbit movie and the second one was really good too. Again, not into the talking dragon. But the the battle of the dragon was amazing. He gets like covered in gold. Like that whole thing was like unbelievable to see. And uh honestly, Battle of Five Armies was a better battle than the like major, major one in Return of the King. I gotta give my hats off to the Hobbit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint everybody out there. And my family, probably, because where my hobbit head's at. You know what I mean? I got to get I gotta get this group together. I can't be alone on this one. I Just go watch them all. I feel like the theater thing made a difference. If you watch them all on the same setup in a row, basically like I did, one a day for six days, take a break in between for sure. It's a lot. But. I mean, miss me with that extended universe shit. I don't want to see the extra versions, really, of any of them. Because then I know I'd have to watch the extended version of all of them. And it's just like, I can't watch these seven-hour things. Um, but I, I 100% my takeaway is I should have been into this the whole time. Because they're fucking awesome, and I would rewatch them 100%. And I think as far as, like, any like book series adaptation goes it's like i don't think anything could come close to that like regardless of like the level of the quality of the adaptation itself like there's just no way you could make a book series those good of movies period you know what i mean like there's no way that like all harry potter movies could be like insanely high quality movies like there's no denying that they are my thing is mostly, like, if you're going to praise that Lord of the Rings trilogy like that, how is the Hobbit not in contention for the same things? Just because it's later and more stuff has been done? Just because Marvel already stole that whole idea and, like, made it to a whole nother level with their universe where it's, like, 50 productions at once instead of three? I guess. I guess just, like, the the impressiveness just went away for people, but... 
those movies are just on par. They're just as good in every way, you know. And what I like about the Hobbit ones, they're cleaner, they're more focused stories. And I, if 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 you don't know the books, like I don't know the books, then I don't really care about the extra stuff. You know, that's just fan service at that point. I'm trying to watch the Lord of the Rings, bro. I'm trying to get, I want to see the thing get destroyed. And like their journey was just lame. It was just lame. It was easy the whole time. That's like why they had to split it up. They just kind of walked straight there. They got detoured. But that was pretty much it. (laughs) It like wasn't that difficult for them to destroy the ring. It was really just Frodo sucks. And he won't marry Sam. And that's the hardest thing. So, listen, it was fun. Uh, It was a fun experiment. I'm glad I did it. And I learned a lot, and I really liked it. It enriched my cinematic knowledge and experience, and everybody's wrong, though. And I'm the hot take guy, and that's sad because nobody will ever believe me And I don't think that any fan would change their mind. So now I'm just this guy with the dumb thoughts. So that's a bummer. But it is what it is. I'm sorry. I got to... Now that I got this under my belt, you know, I got to find some more stuff. We got to go through. We got to go through big series. We're doing franchises only. Just kidding. But maybe not. Who knows? That's the beauty of it. Might just stumble upon something. Because that's really what this was. There was no goal or intention of having any of this happen. I was just like real high and I was like, let's check out The Hobbit. Because I was fascinated by it. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand why I was hated on and all my hunches were correct. It still doesn't make any sense to me. And I just got sucked in. And I was like, well, now I have to give a fair shot because there's no way that I liked this and won't like the other. And that ended up being correct. So, I mean, good hunches, bad takes. Maybe the new new title of the podcast. Uh, but doing this has also really geared me up to... I'm, I've been thinking about even more so than usual doing my... PTA V Tarantino episode. I just like can't bring myself to physically make the lists. You know, it just seems like it would be really difficult. Like when it, when it gets down to like picking a top 3, you know? I don't know. Like, uh, I guess we'll bookend the episode. This is a good good time to call back as any. So for the decade of fantasy for Kanye's album, I was like, let me put that ranking together because The Ringer put it on Instagram. And I was like, you know what, let me think about it because I haven't actually redone my ranking in a minute even though I know it's definitely changed. Now, of course, fantasy's won. It's like the best album ever made again. You know, fight me, whatever. Or do- just don't, but, you know, who cares? You're pretentious. <laughs> uh, I went fantasy, Yeezus, dropout. Pablo, that was a tough call. Really, it just comes down to like Silver Surfer intro is horrendous. I, I deleted it. Lowlights is whatever. Fax isn't great. You know, there's just weaker spots, whereas College Dropout is like pretty consistently amazing. So fantasy, Yeezus, dropout, Pablo. Then I went 808's graduation. Now, that's just because... Drunken Hot Girls and Barry Bonds are probably the two worst songs he's ever made, period. And so that's, again, like a consistency win for 808s, but you could flip those two. It could go, yeah, you could flip both of them, honestly, both of those sets. And then, so after we go 808s graduation, then we go late registration. Uh, Honestly, a lot of skippables on there that I can pass up. It's good. But I just I find that I probably listen to that the least, honestly. Um, then I do yay just because like 
it's like his lo-fi demos album basically you know it's just it's raw and unfinished and that's cool it's kind of like his untitled unmastered from kendrick almost in a weird way but not really i don't know and violent crime is not a good song but the rest of it honestly underrated it just compared to the rest of it it's like how do you do it and then jesus is king pretty much for the same reason i also think that that just kind of got shit on because of all the current climate against him but you know as far as like a jesus album goes it's my favorite that's for sure and then the sunday service choir album is right behind it so still not bad and then if you were to put watch the throne on there i'd probably honestly i'd put it after yay maybe even after jesus is king but you know that's where the rankings lie If that wasn't clear, though, I'll say it all the way through one more time. Uh, I went Fantasy, Yeezus, Dropout, Pablo, 808's Graduation, Late Registration, Yay, and Jesus is King. And if I were to rate, rank the fucking Lord of the Rings Hobbit multiverse, that would be tough. Probably Return of the King last. (laughs) <laughs> do not like it. Probably. Honestly, the most controversial thing is that I think Unexpected Journey is one. Two Towers, two. Desolation, three. Five Armies, four. Fellowship, five. And Return of the King, six. Yeah, that's my official Lord of the Rings rankings. Controversial. It may be. Uh, But that's it. We're out of time. It flew by. Unlike the last hour plus of Return of the King. (laughs) Uh, So who knows what's going to happen next week. I may have a whole new thing going on. Just depends how this uh, exciting Thanksgiving week plays out. Enjoy your meals. Enjoy yourselves. And remember, I are fat. You are fat. We are fat. Calculator.